So let's get stuck into an example of what a dynamic business model actually looks like. We're looking at a company that wants to model the launch of a new product. And uh, we're looking at this from the point of view of Alan Analyst, who's got to make the sales and profit plan. And the company has done this uh, kind of thing before and estimates that there could be some 10 million potential customers for the product. And other products like it have succeeded over some three to five years or else they've uh, not succeeded and, and uh, failed to be successful products. They've achieved that by spending something like $5 million per month in marketing, not always the same amount, all through the life of the product launch. That starts demand going for the product before word of mouth starts to help that growth accelerate. And the product has new versions coming out all the time. And something like 5% of uh, owners will buy those new versions each month, but only after the product's been out for a while. They're not going to replace the product immediately. The product costs about $180 to make and to supply, but that could fall to as little as $80 or less as the production volume grows. So this is Alan's sketch, it's literally sketched, of how he expects total sales of the product to grow over the five-year period. It'll take off slowly at first, but then really start to accelerate as that word of mouth uh, effect starts to kick in and then plateau as uh, most of the potential customers have actually got the product and you're left with replacement sales. And from previous experience and knowing about the cost structures involved, then the company thinks that this is the kind of uh, profit profile that will result. It'll lose money in the early periods when it's spending very heavily on marketing and maybe pricing very competitively simply to get the product going but then profit should come in in later months. So this is a spreadsheet of that product launch. It's calculating the monthly results going down each column and it's working out profit on the left from the sales and uh, cost items. And I've dropped a couple of charts on here. The first chart combines those uh, two items on uh, revenue and profit growth. And uh, the second chart shows the sources of sales. So the uh, blue line is first time uh, customers buying the product and the green line is the replacement purchases from people who've already got it. And the red line is the sum of the two. Now you can actually go and get this spreadsheet, go to that link shown there and you can download the spreadsheet and see what all the calculations are and see how it works. So what does the dynamic model look like and how is it different from, from this? Well, here is a working dynamic model of exactly the same case. Now, this might look somewhat unfamiliar. And indeed, Alan Analyst thinks this is nothing like a spreadsheet. And he hasn't actually built this thing himself. He's had to ask uh, someone else to do it for him. And he's asked his friend who explains that actually this is exactly the same model. And the way you should think about this, Alan, she says, is just think of each item on this picture as being one of those columns in the spreadsheet and the link arrows that you can see are like the cell references that uh, tell you what to calculate from what else but you'll see there's a lot more intuitive information here you can see how all of the values of all the variables are are changing over time and uh, you can go and get this model from the link shown here sdl.re slash tech2c and as i say it is exactly the same model as we just saw on the spreadsheet so given that this model is the same as the spreadsheet why would we need this instead of that spreadsheet well there are some big big advantages here first of all everyone looking at this can see what causes what I mean, you can imagine people sitting in a meeting room looking at this on the screen and everyone can see how everything connects to everything else everything is crystal clear and it's not hidden away inside cell calculation you can as alan has done here sketch in that uh, profit forecast into the uh, profit variable at the bottom of the uh, model there and the sales forecast is in the uh, sales item in the middle in the uh, blue part of the model in cases where you've got actual history you can put actual history values into there and what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the model the blue results in these charts to match the actual or desired data the red results if you don't get it to match then the model's wrong or you can't achieve what it is you were hoping to achieve in the way you thought you could do it 
Furthermore, you can then play out scenarios and choices. If you go to the model and open it and follow the instructions in the model, you will be able to play scenarios with different choices of marketing expenditure and price assumptions. And inside each of those items, there's a very simple language formula. The, the actual formula is what I've shown there. It's the revenue equals sales multiplied by price. It's not something obscure like A$24 multiplied by B$24. So it's really easy easy to, to see what the relationships are that you have created inside the formulas in these models. Now, sometimes we don't have arithmetical relationships between things. We just know, for example, that as we spend more money on marketing, we will gradually reach a larger fraction of the potential customers. But it's not an arithmetical relationship. It's a kind of sophisticated lookup relationship, much more powerful than you can do in, uh, in spreadsheets. You can simply sketch how you think marketing reach varies as you spend more money on marketing. And all of this is much, much faster to do with a good modeling tool than you could ever do with, with spreadsheets. And it's much harder to make mistakes. If the blue line doesn't match the red line, there's a problem. OK, it's as simple as that. And it's also hard to make cell reference errors because everything that is calculated from something else is connected by arrows. You can't even make a cell reference error in the first place because you can only use things that actually are connected. You can do this with people because it's so fast and you can do it in real time. You can be having the meeting and actually constructing this model as we're having the discussion. And they will actually enjoy doing it with you as well. This is much more fun than peering at uh, obscure spreadsheets. But if you have to use spreadsheets, and, and you will still continue to need to, to use those, then you can link this to uh, spreadsheets if you must. The, the reason these models work is that they capture explicitly on the screen some critical things. The first of which is that key factors in these models accumulate over long periods of time. We're thinking about things like uh, customer numbers or staffing or product range changes or investments in capacity uh, that change over long periods of time. They capture all of the interdependencies in the system. Everyone says they want joined up plans. Well, this is how to get joined up plans. And when you do the joining up, what you discover is that there's feedback going on. You've got reinforcing feedback, driving growth or driving collapse in your in your business. Or you've got feedback mechanisms that stop you making progress. And the, the models also capture uh, th the, the thresholds that cause tipping points in the, in the real world. So uh, as the number of owners of this product grows slowly initially, there comes a point where that word of mouth feedback effect causes a tipping point and growth accelerates and, and piles ahead. And lastly, these models can and, and should, where relevant, include intangible factors, things like reputation, things like staff motivation and uh, skills, all of which are, uh, are pretty tough to do in uh, spreadsheet models.